Today's topic is going to be individuation. But in order to crack that egg, we must start off with the question, what is consciousness? Plato would describe it as our soul. He separated the soul into three parts. The imperative, which is our wants and desires. The rationale, which analyzes and decides for us. And thirdly, the spirited part. This is almost the opposite of our desires and it's those ineffable emotions that help fill us with purpose and virtuous resolve. This theory for near millennia stood as the foremost secular understanding of our consciousness and laid out much of the structure of our current inner working model. However, in the turn of the 20th century, ideas around consciousness were being questioned and expanded upon. Freud developed onto Plato with the psychodynamic id, ego and superego. So how is this linked to today's subject, individuation? In order to understand it, we must look at it through the lens of Plato and Freud's triptych model of consciousness. Carl Jung was a psychologist who adapted upon Freud coined the term individuation, which can simply be defined as the development of the individual from the universal. Again, great things come in freeze. First, let's start with the self. Jung theorized that we emerge as babies with a unified sense of self, but this is minimized as we mature. But as we start to establish our identities against an unstable world, we form our persona, a carefully crafted mask to protect our unified self. However, important issues will start to arise when people over-identify with their social mask. Thirdly, the shadow. This is what we have repressed, believing the material world shapes our persona and leads us to cast aside aspects of our true self that does not conform with societal values. The process of individuation is a careful balance. Our sense of self must continue to assess these decisions between our persona and shadow. Jung theorized that traumatic events in your life warp these fragile interlinks between the self, persona and shadow. And this may lead to drastic changes in our persona in order to recompose our conscious self. However, this equilibrium is not always re-established and can lead to neuroses. How can we use individuation ourselves? And what makes this theory stand out? For me personally, individuation stands out because right now there is such a cognitive cacophony of concepts that makes your own voice so very quiet, even for someone as famous as myself. Social media only helps to magnify the pressure put on the persona and even more than ever there is a need to feel part of the in-group and even those rejecting the norms become connected through the internet and form their own collective. There may not be an obvious pragmatic approach to Jung's theory but there certainly is a strong sentiment. And remember, Team Kong.